Actually, you know what? I think we're we're okay. We'll leave you here for a while. Oh, but it's so bad. No, he's not. Oh, where is he? The reason why, guys, I have a dead fish here, um, a large five pound dead fish, it costs a lot of money to buy. Why are you the The reason why I bought this fish and I have a dead fish in front of you is because. As foolish as it is for every single one of us to yell at the fish and try and get him to move, as dumb as that is, because we all know the fish is not going to move. The fish's insides are totally out. Here is the important parallel for us. Every single person in this room, every single person in the whole world, it's just like that fish. In that, every single person before God gives life to that fish is totally dead. Totally unable to move. Totally unable to make even a hint of life. In other words, if you were to ask me, Jeff, when, when did you believe in Jesus Christ? When did God save you? I would say in college. But, but every single day of my life before I was in college, I was like that fish. I was dead. I was lifeless spiritually. I could not respond to God. I could not initiate a relationship with God. I could not pursue God in my own desires, in my own intellect. I was dead. Totally lifeless, unable to move, unable to make any actions whatsoever toward God. So, tonight, guys, we're going to look at Ephesians 2, which is one of the greatest passages in all of the New Testament showing how God gives life to our dead bodies. Tonight is probably one of the greatest passages in all of the New Testament on the gospel, on the salvation that God gives to dead, sinful human beings that have no spiritual life in and of themselves. So, Ephesians 2, follow with me as I read, beginning in verse 1. Ephesians 2, 1. As for you... You were, now everybody say the word with me, dead. dead. You were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts, like the rest. We were by nature objects of wrath. But, because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, here it is, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. There you have it.